Um, so uh, key things that we usually like to tell patients is that, you know, how do these medications work? You know, uh, the main thing is, first of all, they're not crazy. That's usually the main thing that we want to tell patients. This, you know, this is a disorder, and it's treatable, but, it's not the, but they're not crazy. Um, and we know that with these medications, you know, they work on changing some of these chemical imbalances that develop in our brain. And the other thing is that we also know that there are many options available. So if something is not working for them or if they're concerned about this one medication, I heard my friend took this medication, caused all sorts of problems, they don't have to take it. I mean, there are other options out there. Um, we all know that patients have a lot of concerns about taking medications, largely because of issues of stigma. You know, if you know, somebody knows that they're taking antidepressant, they're going to be labeled. They don't want that to uh, occur. So, you know, it, you know, so they you know, end up in this sort of response where they say, because I don't want to be labeled as having depression, even though they have it, um, they won't want to take the medication. And I think really working with them in terms of explaining to them what the medications can do for them, you know, uh, and where they can be if they get appropriate treatment, uh, is the main thing. And then, it, you know, the other thing is offering alternatives. You know, again, for some patients, psychotherapy really is better for them. You know, some people respond better. And, again, there are people who don't like to take, to take medications, period. And we understand that. And so if psychotherapy is an option, by all means, you know, uh, you know I, I generally try to recommend that for patients if, if they are uncomfortable with medications. Um, side effects, you know, these things do happen, and it's important to know about them and to let patients know. So if they're going to, if you're seeing, let's say, a patient and you're going to send them to a doctor and, you know, they acknowledge that they have depression, let them know that sometimes there are problems that occur initially when you take the medications. And some of these common side effects, such as having stomach problems, you know, they might feel a little bit nauseous, they might feel a little uh, restless with some of the medications. Let them know that these things do happen. Uh, they often happen initially over the first couple of weeks, but they often get better. Um, and, you know, let them know that you should try to give the medications a good try for several weeks, and, you know, those side effects will probably get better. But, you know, I again, acknowledging those concerns and making sure that there's some way for those patients to let people know, you know, that, it, that they're experiencing it so that we can work with them on it or to manage those symptoms is really the key thing. And then the final thing is, again, uh, adherence, which kind of feeds back into the side effects. The main thing is making sure patients can take the medication. So, as, you know, as we talked about earlier, doesn't, you know, it's great if we can optimize the medications, but the main thing is that we want to take, you know, make sure that the patients are taking it on a consistent basis. Um, and then we really want to you know, make sure that you know, patients don't stop when they you know, start feeling better um, you know, again, just like all, all of us, you know, at some point, let's, you know, it's not just with antidepressants, it's with any medication. So if we're taking antibiotics, if we're, you, know, we, you know, we were sick enough, our doctors prescribed it for us, by the time people start feeling better, they usually will just stop the medicine, you know, even though we will generally suggest, you know, you know whatever course that we've suggested, a week, 10 days, you know, uh, two weeks. Um, the most important thing is making sure for antidepressants that we stick with this maintenance phase of treatment so that they, that they really consolidate the gains that they've achieved and that we can finally uh, take them off and, and uh, we'll minimize the risk of relapse. Uh, this is the last slide. Yeah. So I think this is, again, sort of the same thing in terms of emphasizing adherence. The key thing is making sure they take their medicine on a daily basis. I mean, there, you know, it is possible to get away with something like Prozac just because it has a long half-life, you know, and so uh, there, you know, the, uh, uh, the drug company that makes uh, Prozac, you know, has this long-acting formulation now because they know that, the, that it has a very long half-life. But the most important thing really is to emphasize taking it on a daily basis um, so that they'll be able to uh, um, continue to get the effects over time. Again, waiting two to four weeks for an effect. If, if you're talking to a patient about these medications and they're saying, you know, I'm not feeling so good with these medications for all the reasons that we talked about, encourage them to stick with it. You know, just give it a month. See how you do with it. And then, uh, you know, as we mentioned, side effects can occur, but they often resolve in a couple of weeks. So, again, this is sort of the reason why, you know, telling patients to be patient is really a key message. Um, keep taking the medication even if you get better, just as we mentioned earlier. And then checking with the doctor who prescribed it, you know, before they stop because, you know, again, it might be appropriate for them to stop the medication. As, as we mentioned before, one of the common problems we see in primary care is that patients continue on these medications for several years when they didn't need to be on it for several years. Think there are some who need it, but not everybody does. Uh, and then the final thing is, again, is sort of along the lines of making sure that we reinforce the patients, you know, the common sort of misconceptions. First of all, they're not crazy. 
these medications are not addictive, um, you know, they can experience some problems as, they, uh, as we start taking them off of the medications. But again, we usually can work with them and get them off of the medications completely. So, uh, so I think that these are sort of the key messages that we um, usually like to let patients know uh, and providers know um, so that they can help the patients uh, understand their medications better. So we're at 3 o'clock. You guys have been very patient. So thanks for sticking with us. Questions? You mean depression? Yeah. You know, I think that the, the big problem is that it's it's been underdiagnosed for a long time, and people don't acknowledge the problems. So, you know, there is a there, there is a set prevalence that we know, you know, from s multiple studies that have looked at, you know, the general population over time. We know that about 10 percent of the population, you know, uh, experiences depression. Uh, and so, uh, in turn, and you know, th these are the people that, for example, are coming into the doctor's office and things like that. I mean, uh, the thing is that, again, you know, because people don't necessarily recognize it, you know, uh, you know, if if they don't recognize it beforehand, and now we're finally understanding it and talking about it more, it seems like the prevalence has gone up. But it's probably more more that it's been there for a while, it's just that people are acknowledging it. 